I'm on a Zoom call and it's so loud. Hey guys, what's up? It's been one month since I started programming on the new Apple MacBook Pro. This is the M1 Max variant. I've been doing iOS, Android, React, Python, and Spring Boot backend development. I've got some awesome news to share with you and some not so good news to share with you. So stay tuned. I thought you'd like to see what I'm up to. I'm refinishing this old garage of mine. It's 60 years old and in terrible condition. You can see it's just the exposed studs right now. What I'm gonna do throughout the course of the coming months is add some electrical, lighting, uh, custom workbench, all kinds of really cool stuff that's gonna make it a really great engineering space. A place where I can come out and program, do hardware engineering, a little bit of welding, all those kinds of activities that I like to do on the side when I'm not working. So if you're interested in hearing more about this project and how I transform spaces for engineers, make sure you hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, let me know if you're interested in more on how this project is unfolding. Now on to the one month max update. I was really surprised at how well out of the box the M1 Max worked with the CalDigit TS3 Plus. For those of you who don't know, that's a docking station that has a single Thunderbolt 3 cable that just plugs into the side. It keeps my device charged. It lets me plug into two 4K Dell UltraSharp monitors, my keyboard, my mouse, my printer, my 1080p webcam, all of it, one cable. It's so convenient. I actually love the TS3 so much that I bought four. One for myself at home, one for my office, one for my wife's office, and one for my wife's home office. We use them across a variety of devices and they just plug in, work, no complaints. The one issue that I have had with the TS3 Plus is updating the firmware. CalDigit released this firmware updating tool that's built for Mac. It runs whenever your Mac restarts. So strangely enough, you're, you have to go through a restart in order for that to work. What ended up happening when I did this on the M1 Max though is I got stuck in a boot loop. So I would stay away from updating the TS3 Plus using the new Apple Silicon until CalDigit updates that software. I sent them an email to let them know about the issue. So be on the lookout for an update from them. Indexing performance. So when you first clone a repository, if it's a seasoned project and it's got a lot of code inside of it, a lot of times your IDEs need to index and get accustomed to all the different files, uh, everything that's inside the project. I've noticed in several projects that I've worked on, specifically an Android project that is just massive. I've seen an 86% speed increase over the previous gen fully specced i9 MacBook Pro. That's 10 minutes to four minutes when indexing a brand new project. You've already heard me mention compile times in my previous videos. If you're working with any kind of statically typed language like Java, Swift, Scala, or Kotlin, my favorite, you're gonna notice a massive performance increase when compiling on these devices. And not just the M1 Max, but the M1 Pro and just the base M1. If you're working with a memory intensive project, look at your current benchmarks on your current machine. So if you're seeing like I did, 40 to 50 gigs of actual memory usage on a daily basis, make sure you take that into account when making your purchasing option. So when I made the decision to go with the 64 gigs that is available on only the M1 Max, I did that because I was looking at my benchmarks of my current operating workflow. So when making the decision on what hardware to buy, I started with memory usage. If you're just doing node development or working on React-based websites, then you might not need a ton of memory, but if you're working with a lot of VMs like I am on a daily basis, where it's Android apps, iOS apps, Postman, Docker containers, uh, JVM-based languages, those, those are memory hogs typically, you're gonna wanna take a look at the memory benchmark. So start off from the bottom. If you're anywhere like I was from 50, uh, 40 to 50 gigs of memory usage, then you might wanna consider the M1 Max. If you're using less memory than that, let's say that you're somewhere between 20 and 30 gigs of RAM, then just stick with the M1 Pro configuration because that one is configurable up to 32 gigs of RAM. Last but not least, if you're not using that much RAM at all, 
There is also the base M1 configuration that comes with a max spec to out 16 gigs of RAM. All three of these machines are gonna compile super fast. It's just dependent upon how much memory you need for your workflow or what you project your workflow is gonna be in the next four to five years. And don't forget, if you're right on the edge, if you're right at 16 gigs of memory or right at 32 gigs of memory, maybe you don't wanna pay the extra money to go up a spec these SOCs are extremely efficient at memory swapping. That is when memory is swapped to disk and back. So just something to consider if you're right at that maximum level and you don't think you're gonna go any higher, just stick with that configuration and don't go up a step. As you've heard me say in previous videos, these new SOCs are running far more efficiently than the Intel counterparts that came before them. I'm seeing a 23% drop on average temperature in these machines. So the numbers of this, I was seeing 120 degrees sustained when running the i9 and about 95 degrees Fahrenheit sustained when running the M1 Max. And that's just like compiling really hard, running a ton of unit tests, ton of emulators, all the types of things that I use in my daily workflow. This was unexpected after an entire month of usage. I'm using this as a laptop again. I'm sitting on the couch and programming every single morning before work. I absolutely love how the Liquid Retina XDR's display on the 16 inch is guiding me through code. If you don't know my workflow, I'm typically running two coding windows side by side. One is unit tests, one is my implementation. I just really like being able to connect directly with my code and just shed the distractions and I love that I can do that on the couch now. So for those of you who don't know, the i9 MacBook Pro is almost unusable in your lap. It just gets so super hot. It'll burn your thighs uh, and it'll make your hands sweat if you're the nervous type like me. Just from sustained compiling and you running emulators and all those types of things, I'm just really happy that I can get back to sitting on the couch and programming again. So a little tip for those of you who are switching to Mac and are using a JVM-based programming language, download and install SDK Man. I absolutely love it for managing my JDK installations. It helped me find native ARM64 based JDKs that I could run and compile super fast, way faster than on the i9. So one of the minor grievances I've got going on right now with the M1 Max is some of my Python dependencies, very specific Python dependencies, they may not apply to you. Uh, Pillow Hive, for instance, I'm doing some server-side computations where I convert Apple-based proprietary image formats into a base WebP format. Uh, that's just easier for me to work with when working on a server or, or throwing down to any of the Android or iOS clients that I'm working with. So I filed an issue for this on GitHub. Uh, it's just not installing and working for me, so it's not letting me develop locally. It's not that huge of a deal, but it is slowing down my development process. Couple honorable mentions, you finally have an excuse to write unit tests. As I tell the devs across my organization, please, please, please write unit tests. They're so good for the project. Tests kick up in 30% faster time, and I noticed a 60% overall faster completion rate when running tests as well on this machine. Battery life. I've also mentioned this in my previous videos. After one month of constant usage with this device, I just don't notice the battery anymore. I don't have any more anxiety. It's gone. Since I've purchased this device, I haven't once cracked the lid and said, where'd my battery go? It's been amazing. So if I'm pushing it and I'm doing a bunch of VM work, um, if I'm running a ton of emulators, compiling a ton, running unit tests, like actually really hitting my workflow hard, I can kill this device in six hours pretty easily. But if I'm doing just like Zoom calls, managing my team, uh, doing Jira spec entries for planning my next sprint, those types of engineering tasks, I don't notice the battery at all. It just runs all day. It's awesome. I can go days without charging this device if I'm just doing engineering spec work. Now, one of the benefits of going with the M1 Max model specifically is that 140 watt MagSafe charger. The M1 Pro doesn't come with it, just the M1 Max. This allows you to use 140 watts to charge up over MagSafe specifically. 
The Thunderbolt 4 connections on all the devices are capped at 100 watts. Therefore, the 140 watts is only available over MagSafe. If you've got any kind of battery life anxiety, just plug that thing in and fast charge in no time. So one of the things that I absolutely love about the new size of the MacBook Pro is the thickness. It actually fits a lot better in the hand. It feels more natural. The thinner i9s that I have currently just don't carry as easily. When I'm walking around the office or at home, this just has a better feel in the hand. So as I promised in my previous videos, every dollar this channel makes comes back to you in the form of a giveaway. I use awesome products on a daily basis for all the engineering work that I do. I have real opinions about the hardware that I use on a daily basis. I will throw it away if it's no good. The stuff that I want to give away on this channel is the stuff that I use on a daily basis that I truly believe in. So our first giveaway winner is Aaron from California. I had a chance to talk to Aaron after he chose his DOS Keyboard 4 professional version for Mac. He went with the loud, clicky variant keys. I still love this keyboard. It's just a little bit too loud for Zoom calls. So I use the, the brown switches for daily use. The brown just doesn't come through on a Zoom call as much. Aaron, I really appreciate all the emails you've been sending me. I'm really sorry to hear about your dad. Um, I recently lost someone too, man, and it, it is really hard. So I'm glad that we could do this for you and send that on your way. Guys, if you're interested in, in any more giveaways, there's a lot more coming. Just make sure you hit the subscribe button and follow me on Instagram and Twitter because that's where we're going to announce the next giveaway. So that's it for today, guys. I really appreciate your time. If you wanna hear more about this engineering project I've got going on, where I'm running cables, custom lighting, workspaces for programming and hardware engineering, those kinds of things, leave a comment below, that way I know to include it in future videos. You've been watching DevTech, and guys, don't forget, right unit tests. Hello world. Hello world. I'm on a Zoom call and it's so loud. I'm on a Zoom call and it's an appropriate level.